Good morning, my dear students. I welcome you to the National University online class. During this pandemic, I feel proud to be the part of this National University online class lecture as a resource person. Please maintain the health rules. Our subject is English. This program is for B honors first year students. Course code 211101. Name of course, English Reading Skills. Today's lecture number six. And title of the lecture, Reading Comprehension Passage, Part B, with sample question answers. And here I am Khandokar Mashir Rahman, Assistant Professor, Department of English, Gaivanda, Government College, Gaivanda. So you know by this time, we have finished fifth lecture, and I hope you have attended those lectures and in the last lecture, I tried to show you reading comprehension passage part A, that is regarding our question paper that you have to sit for the exam. And today's topic is you see, recapping as usual, checking the previous home task, reading comprehension passage part B, writing answers to some sample questions. Part B is different from part A. So I will, I will try to show you what type of questions or what type of passages are there for part B and how to write the answers. And also I'll try to uh, discuss about summary and pressy, how to write a good summary or how, what is the difference between summary and pressy. That is the topics for today. Before going to the today's topic, I would like to ask you uh, about recapping, can you recall the last class? What we learned in the last class? If you have attended the class, you should remember that we talked about uh, reading comprehension passage, Claude Monet. Can you remember now? Yes, I think you can remember now. The passage was on Claude Monet, French artist, I mean painter. And after that passage, we try to answer some different type of questions, brief answer question, one mark answer questions, and also multiple choice answer questions, and synonym and uh, making sentence with the words. And also we did transformation from the some of the sentence taking from the passage. I think you have been able to recall the class. And did you do the homework? The last homework, what I did, I told you to do after the class. Comprehension passage part A, I told you, you have to read on more articles, stories and newspapers. And after reading those articles or passages, you should ask questions, you should make some questions, you said brief answer questions, try to answer those questions. And also you should pick up some of the sentences of different types, simple, complex, compound, and try to change them in the other type. Have you done? Okay, you have done. Some of you have done and some of you did not. So who have done the homework, welcome. Congratulations, but who did not do the homework, I would like to say you must follow the lectures. If you don't do the homework along with my, I mean, home task that I give you every lecture, if you don't do the homework, then this lecture will not bring too much benefit to you. So I think you should follow the lectures and do the homeworks as usual. Now today's topic, reading comprehension passage part B. Let's start. I'll give you time to read the passage. Before going to reading this passage, you must take down the question first. Okay? You will write down the question. Start writing. I told you you should be ready with pen and paper for my class. This language class. It is not actually liter literature class. English reading skills. It's mainly language class, so you have to do some work along with me. Just listening to the lecture is not enough. You have to do some work. Learning by doing is more effective. So in part B, you will be given a passage. After the passage, you'll be given these questions. And I have mentioned the mark over here, you see, four, fives are 20. That means out of eight questions, after reading a passage in part B, out of eight questions, you have to answer any five. And each answer will 
be given four marks. So four fives are 20 marks for this part B. Copy the question quickly. Because this is the technique. When you uh, go for the comprehension passage, you first you should look at the questions. If you look at the questions, if you read the questions at a glance, you can guess what is the best we are going to read about. At least you can guess, you can understand the subject matter of the topic or of the story. Have you finished writing down the questions? Why is teaching English to native people of Bangladesh is so difficult? Number two, what kind of problems do our students face regarding learning English? What is direct method according to the passage? <coughs> Sorry, what is the role of teacher in direct method? What do you understand by audio lingual approach in learning English? What is oral drill? What is communicative approach in language learning? What is the structural problem in language? How can we solve it? Now, can you guess after reading these questions? I think you have understood some of the questions, of course. And you can guess now the passage we are going to read. It's about what? About English language teaching or learning. There are some, it's a method, direct method, audio lingual method. These are the, we have got some idea from the questions what we are going to read. So if you have this idea, with this idea now, you will go for reading the passage, then you must pick, try to pick up the answers for these questions. Try to remember some points from the passage. Now you start reading the story. Okay, have you finished writing questions? Okay, that's good. Now start reading the story. This is of course silent reading and intensive reading, as I told you before. Take two and a half minutes. You have to read quickly as a fluent reader. That's the, that's the technique of reading scales. I told you to develop. First, you have to have fluency. Then you should give importance to the content or meaning. While reading, you should try to pick up the uh, main information. I mean, any new word, new name, events, date, or by this time you have already read the questions, what phrase, which phrase, or which sentence, or which word is or relevant to those questions. You should try to pick up, you should remember these things. That will help you to write the answers. For this slide, another minute to go. Especially uh, look at the highlighted words or phrases. The time is, uh, for this time, uh, slide is time is over. Now look at the second part of the story. The story is continuing. Take another two minutes for this part. Read quickly. Of course, I'll read once for you. I told you for pronunciation. And first reading is not actually reading is seeing. That's why I you will read with me for second time. And later on, I'll try to write some question answers because this time will not cover up to give you to write all the questions here.
Have you done? Three seconds to go. I think you have done. Okay, now let's go for second reading. I am reading for you. Try to understand the story. Teaching English to the native people of Bangladesh is not at all an easy task. Task means work. It's not an easy work. It's a difficult work. Teaching English to the native people of Bangladesh is not at all an easy task. That means it's a difficult task. In a school, the traditional grammar translation method is followed so the pupils only develop their reading and writing skills but they can't speak or understand English by listening. So what is the problem here? In school, the traditional, I mean conventional, the method that is that has been going on for a long time, that is the name of the method is grammar translation method, is followed, is practiced, followed means practiced, so the pupils, means the students, only develop their reading and writing skills. You know, there are four skills of language learning, listening, speaking, reading, and writing. But this grammar translation method develop only reading and writing skills. As a result, they can't. Students can't speak or understand English by listening. So a direct method which gives stress to listening and speaking has been developed. Now we have got another method here. So a direct method which gives stress to listening and speaking has been developed. So direct method was introduced or has been developed as a reaction to grammar translation method. I think you have got the meaning? Yes. Now, the teacher has to draw pictures, acts to create a situation and has to show models or real object. In this direct method, the teacher has to draw pictures in the language class, acts to create a situation and has to show models or real object sometimes. It is creating a bond between experience and expression. So this indirect method, this is just like creating a bond between experience and expression. So the teacher from his own experience, he try to make some expressions and those are ex expressions are learned by the learners, students. It is time consuming. So this is actually negative side or weak side of direct method. It is time consuming. It is means direct method is time consuming. It takes time because the teacher has to create a situation of English speaking environment, which is a tiresome task. Of course, you know, creating or making such a situation where this environment would be just like English class, English environment, it's a tiresome, difficult work for a teacher. We also know that every language has a definite structural pattern and in essential English, there are 282 structures. So that is another problem in language teaching, actually, there each and every language has its own different types of its structure, structural pattern. Bangla language, the structure of Bangla language is not same that's like the structure of English language. In our English language, essential English, that means everyday English that we practice, in our everyday life, there are 282 structures. Following the structure, the teacher gives several examples, then goes for oral drill and invites more examples from the students. So, following the structure, so teacher gives structure to the students and make some examples and give oral drill. That means oral means you know oral oral saline. Harwell, that means spoken, drill. Drill means exercise, practice, doing an action, a repetition of an action again and again for better, I mean, perfection. So oral drill, students get a structure from the teacher and they orally practice again and again to be perfect or to have comment on that structure and invites more examples from the students. This is the direct method. This process also lays emphasis on some written work like making sentences using the substitution tables. So there is writing work also in this direct method using substitution tables, some part of the sentence is given and some part given blank by the teacher. So the students are asked to fill in the blanks. That is a way 
in this direct method, it's a technique. But when the oral drill goes on, the class becomes noisy and sometimes limited to a particular pattern. As usually you can guess, if all the students together start speaking in the class, I mean orally practicing loudly, the class becomes noisy and sometimes limited to a particular pattern. They cannot learn so many things in a single class, only one pattern or two patterns are structured in a day. It is mechanical and monotonous. Sometimes this direct method, the class, language class, become mechanical and monotonous because the students don't uh, feel comfort when they are practicing the same structure again and again for the whole day or whole class. So they feel bored. So communicative approach has evolved where interaction between the teacher and the students takes place as a two-way process. So for the weakness of direct method, later on communicative approach has evolved where interaction between the teacher and the students takes place as a two-way process. So in this process, communicative approach, both the students and teachers are very active in the class. Audiolingual method is another one. Audiolingual approach also has evolved as a modern concept listening and speaking skills as well as pronunciation through the cassettes. So this is the difference. I mean, why audiolingual method, you see audiolingual method, audio, you can guess there is the use of cassettes. This learners listen to the cassettes to get the native like, I mean, pronunciation of the words. Teachers should know all the methods as a language teacher should know all the methods of language teaching. The blending, I mean mixing of approaches will be the teacher's own creativity. If the teacher is creative enough, if he can mix up all the methods, all the techniques, whatever he needed to teach the students, then it is his creativity, it is his speciality. And he's a good language teacher, of course. Now, look at the questions. Why is teaching English to native people of Bangladesh is so difficult? Can you write? I will give you a very few minutes. I mean, at best, I mean, you can write. I may give you two to three minutes to write answers. Or at best four minutes. Try to write at least two answers out of these eight. Out of these eight questions, just try to write two answers. Any two. I'll give you the answers. I'll show you the answers how to write because here is four marks not brief answer question not a single sentence is enough but remember it just to make it in large i mean big answer you should not write or add anything irrelevant to the topic i mean the story so i told you to write down the question so you have the questions on your page now i'm showing you the story if you need help from the story look at the page and it's right answer quickly at least two, try to answer two questions out of those eight. Then you will match your answer with my one and you will see how can you develop, improve your answer for this part B. So this is the second part of the story. I'm showing you the story. Any two questions? Take another minute. So here actually your writing skills is also important because you have to write full sentence, correct sentences and to the point. Your understanding of the questions, what things are asked for. Okay, 
your time is up actually <clears throat> if i give you time you can write i think some of you can write of course the answers but i, I i'd like to show you actually what would be the answer what how can you write at it for four marks as i told you there are i mean four marks for these answers four marks and you write five four fives are 20 for this part b in your question paper so actually today i am trying to show you your sample questions for part b now look at the answer for one question number one why is teaching english to native people of bangladesh is so difficult if you have written down the answer you uh, look at my answer and you can match your answer teaching english to the native people of bangladesh is difficult because in our schools the traditional grammar translation method is followed in language teaching as a result our students only develop their reading and writing skills in english but they cannot speak or understand english by listening have you got the answer so remember it as i told you you should not copy direct sentence to write your answer for comprehension passage never ever you should copy direct sentence you can copy some phrase and words from the story or passage but you should not you must try to give your own words own sentence structure to write the answers sometimes the answer is directly written in the passage or the story but you should not copy you should at least you should give synonymous words paraphrasing i mean rephrase the sentences and the structures try to make it your own have you got it you have to write the answers in your own words so look at number two what kind of problems do our students face regarding learning english it's a little very close to question number one what kind of problems do our students face regarding learning english so look at the answer we know there are four skills of language learning listening speaking reading and writing the classical method that is the traditional grammar translation method emphasizes only on reading and writing skills as this old method is still followed in our schools for language teaching our students face the problem of developing listening and speaking skills in english language even it happens that a student having a b honors or ma in english cannot understand bbc news or make verbal communication with a native english speaker properly can you guess i think you have got the idea how to write a good answer so all the informations are not written in the story like four skills giving this bbc news or communication these are from your common sense from your common sense but you see you are adding these points to improve your answer but these points are not irrelevant the points that you can add to improve your answer that should be relevant to the passage or topic have you got it i think you have got it. okay now look at question number three what is direct method according to the passage so this is a method language teaching method what things are written in the story about direct method try to write in your own words look at this answer number three according to the passage direct method is a language learning method which gives emphasis on listening and speaking when the grammar translation method failed to improve listening and speaking skills the two major skills in language learning dm that is direct method has been developed as a reaction to gt method and it started to give more importance on listening and speaking than reading and writing because listening and speaking are more essential than reading and writing in our everyday communication you see how the answer has been written what is direct method so direct method what is direct method why it has come and what is importance in this method everything is written over here just to make it fit for four marks answer have you got it just not write a single sentence as much as details you can write for four marks or relevant ideas you should put for this answer in part b look at question number four what is the role of teacher in direct method what does a teacher do in in language teaching class in direct method in direct method a teacher has to play the most important role unlike gt method here a teacher has to be always active and do a lot of functions in the class he has to draw pictures acts to create a situation 
and has to show models of real objects. You see, I have copied some of the phrases from the story or passage, but I did not copy any sentence. So you have to do like that. He has to draw pictures, acts to create a situation and has to show models of real object. In a sense, he has to create a situation of English speaking environment and a bond between experience and expression. Okay, look at number five. What do you understand by audiolingual approach in learning English? So that is another question. Look at the answer, audiolingual approach. After DM, audiolingual method has been evolved as a modern concept of foreign language teaching. This method emphasizes on listening and speaking skills as well as correct pronunciation. So that is new, correct pronunciation, native-like pronunciation that is important in audio lingual. To develop native-like pronunciation in this method, cassettes are used in the language teaching class. If you can write the answer in this way, it will be given good marks. So I have tried to show you what do you understand, what is oral drill? So it's a technique actually. What is oral drill? Look at the answer. Oral drill is a technique of foreign language teaching. In direct method, this technique is used where students listen to a model provided by the teacher and repeat the structural pattern through oral practice. This is oral drill, it's technique. Look at number seven. What is communicative approach in language teaching or learning? Communicative approach. So seven number answer is here. Communicative approach is a process of teaching foreign language. This approach has been developed to remove the monotonous and mechanic atmosphere of direct method. This approach emphasizes on interaction between teacher and learners so that the learners can learn the language effectively and become able to use the language in real life situations. This is a two way communication process. Actually, this is important. This is being practiced now in our country, you know, communicative approach. And look at question number eight. What is the structural problem in language? How can we solve it? The answer is here. Every language has a definite structural pattern and in essential English, there are 282 structures. It is difficult for the students to follow such huge structures in language. This is the problem actually, huge number of structures. How can you solve it? This problem can be solved by following the communicative approach. This approach has evolved where interaction between the teacher and the learners takes place as a two-way process. Both teacher and learners actively participate in this learning process. As a result, learners learn language with pleasure. They never feel boredom or monotony in this process. So using or applying communicative approach, we can solve the problem, structural problem. So this is the way, it's not like that you have to uh, copy this answer word to word, you can change the, you can write in your own way, no problem. So this is the way how to write answer for part B. Now, another two topics I'm going to introduce you, that is summary and precise writing, literary terms, summary and precise, sometimes you're asked to write summary, a poem or any text, or complete passage also, precise also. So summary, what is summary? You are familiar with this one, summary, perhaps not with precise. A summary is a record in a reader's own words that gives the main points of a piece of writing such as a newspaper article, the chapter of a book, or even a whole book. A summary omits details and does not include the reader's interpretation of the original. Have you got the point? You have to remember, summary is a record of reader's own words that gives the main points of a story or passage. It may be newspaper article, book, or chapter. Summary omits details you need to remember. You, you should not write every details in your summary. Does not include the reader's interpretation of the original. You should not give your own interpretation when you are writing the summary of a story. It's the story in brief actually. Summary means the story in brief. You should omit the less important things, keeping main important things. That is summary writing. How to write a summary, you see. How you can write a summary. When writing a summary, remember that it should be in the form of a paragraph. Have you got it? Summary should be written in the form of a paragraph. A summary begins with an introductory sentence that states the text's title, author, and main point of the text as you see it. So if you can understand after reading the story, the text, who is the author, what is the title of this story, so you should start writing the summary 
in the very first sentence you should mention the text title author and the main point you must mention in the first line what is the story is about that should be given in the first sentence introductory sentence of your summary let's see some other points to write a summary a summary is written in your own words that i told you when you are writing summary you should give your own words synonymous words you should not copy words from the passage or the story you should try to give synonymous words a summary contains only the ideas of the original text do not insert do not put in any of your own opinions interpretations deductions or comments into a summary that means you should not add anything else out from outside of the story or from your own thoughts when you are writing the summary as it is but in short the story is in short identify in order the significant subclaims supporting ideas the author uses to defend the main point so subclaims in supporting ideas the main idea to establish the main idea what supporting ideas the author has been incorporated or written in the story you should find out some supporting ideas also in the summary you should write some supporting ideas write a last sentence that wraps up i mean ends up your summary often a simple rephrasing of the main point that means what you mentioned in the first sentence the main point that should be rephrased that should be said in another way in the last sentence that will be a wrap up or ending of your summary have you got it how to write a summary now what is prescian what is the difference between prescian and summary try to see what is presci and difference between a presci and a summary presci writing is an exercise in compression so this is also writing in short like summary but what is the difference let us see a presci is the gist of a passage expressed in as few words as possible a praises should give all essential points so that anyone reading it will be able to understand the idea expressed in the original passage note that praises writing is different from paraphrasing or paraphrasing in summary writing praises writing is different from paraphrasing the main difference between a praises and a paraphrase or summary is that in a praises you use the language and structure of the original one remember it this is the point you need to remember in a praise when you are writing a praise you use the language and structure of the original one the same structure that is given in the story the original language you are not writing synonymous you are not writing your own different types of structures of sentence particularly key terms and phrases every key terms and phrases you are writing from the story in your praise in para paraphrases and summaries you must use your own words as much as possible and as few words from the original as possible have you got it now i think you have got the difference between summary and presi summary is in short the story is in short or brief presi is also the story in short and brief but what is the difference here you try to understand when you are writing a summary you are paraphrasing it rephrasing it you are giving your synonymous word new words you are changing the structure of the sentence also you are giving your own sentence structure keeping the gist of the story but when you are writing a sum a presi you are not changing the sentence structure even you are not writing synonymous words you are writing exact words of the story you are copying the words from the story and you are copying the structure of the sentences of the story and writing in short in short means you are giving you are keeping only main points key words and main points of the story but you are omitting some of the less important things from the story to make it short so have you got it i think by this time you have understood the difference between presi and summary sometimes you are asked to write a presi or summary on the given passage in part b so you should practice on writing summary and presi okay have you got it so today i tried to show you actually the uh, sample question of part b many students can't understand that's why they lose marks in this part b because you have to write for four marks but you shall sometimes some students try to enlarge the answer four pages but this is language you know you have to write to the point you should not write unnecessary things to make it verbose just to uh, make a long answer for four marks no not like that you have to write exact answer to the point what you can add that means relevant ideas Uh, that goes with the question or that goes with the passes those ideas you can incorporate or write in your answer to make it an improved one or rich one 
Otherwise, unnecessary things you should not add just to make it a long answer for four marks. If it is, if you don't have anything to add, just try to the point. If it is short answer, you will be given credit, no problem. But don't think that you have to make it four pages in this language. This language understanding is most important over here. How much you have understood after reading the passage that is asked for here in this part B. Okay, so we have also tried to show you the difference between what is summary and what is precise. Both are gist, but summary is written in rephrasing in your own words, own sentences, but precise is written using the words and sentences from the story, but in short, omitting the less important things. And also we have seen here how to write a summary, some points we have given here. Now it's time to take home work. It's your home task. Keep on reading more and more English stories, articles, or reading comprehension passages. Make some questions after you're reading the text and try to answer those questions yourself. Practice on writing summary, precy, or theme I have written. Here, yeah, theme I have not included today. Inshallah, next class, we will try to learn how to write theme. Okay, so you will practice writing summary and precy after this class the, on the past stories or passages that you have read and try to share your answers with your friends. That's important, you know. You should try to share your answer with your friends. That will develop your reading skills. So I hope you have understood, you have got some idea about your question paper part B and also how to write summary and precy. So thank you for attending the class. Try to follow the lecture and do the homework. If you do the homework really, this class will benefit you, otherwise not. So I hope you will follow the lecture and do the homeworks, and you will of course attend the remaining classes. Thank you for attending the class. Stay home, stay safe, pray for all. Have a nice time, bye-bye. I hope to see you next class, inshallah.